Today, I want to build for my eGPU dock an enclosure that makes this external accessory for my laptop not so much of the mess that it currently looks like when in use. My goal is to hide the dock, graphics card, power supply, and as much of the cables as possible. To see how I do this, stay tuned. I'm impressed at what this external GPU dock was able to do for a 2010 laptop that I wasn't sure would be of any use. It's actually given me a platform that I now use to slowly learn the game of Fortnite on, which I would have never done in the past due mostly to lack of interest. Now that I've built my first gaming computer, I want to be the one to go on testing its capabilities. Although the system is portable compared to a desktop, it still takes time to set up for use or pack up if you want to take it with you. Today, I'm going to solve the semi-portable dilemma and build an enclosure for all of the external GPU pieces to make it into a more mobile system. I'm going to start with some design work, so let's get started. Because I envision the enclosure basically as a box in shape, I'm going to design the mock-up using these sheets of paper which will make folding the squared off corners easy. This could take a while, but I do have a lot of paper to work with. What makes the design a challenge is that there are so many cables that will either run inside the enclosure between the connected parts, as well as cables that will run from the enclosure to something external like a wall plug or a monitor. Another design question is the size of the graphics card. I've never really been familiar with gaming equipment and I know there are some massive cards available. To play it safe, I had heard the new 30 series cards from Nvidia are longer than usual at 185mm so I'll probably use that as a guide for the length of my enclosure. What I want in the end is a very simple looking box with a power cord and video cable extending out of it and no sign of other cables or parts. So this is about as close a mock-up as I'll need to the actual enclosure. The dimensions at the bottom of the mock-up are 4 inches by 12 inches and the height is 6 inches tall. The short-sided box will be the base and the taller one will be the cover. The power supply and dock will sit just about where they're shown here. Just behind the power supply I should have enough room to coil up the 8-pin lead and leave enough of it to run outside the enclosure to where it will power the dock. I haven't cut the openings for access to the ports on this mock-up but they're pretty easy to figure out so I'll wait till the actual enclosure is ready. Before devoting time to turn this mock-up into the real thing, I decided to do some shopping just in case I can find a container similar enough in size to the mock-up. After walking around the store looking at different containers, I realized maybe I'm making this project too difficult. There are so many containers that can accommodate so many different GPU and power supply configurations. Maybe the best thing is to focus on buying a container that fits an individual's specific requirements. By the time I got back from my shopping trip, I had found a container, not quite the size I needed, but I felt as long as it's not too small, it should suffice. The idea of this video is how to enclose everything as opposed to trying to build the perfect enclosure. I took a liking to this container because of the clear shell that will let you see what's inside the enclosure. Another feature I liked was that the blue cover was very durable. So durable in fact that I felt it would make an ideal mounting platform to mount the GPU and power supply to and the clear shell would now become the cover. A preliminary step I felt was important was to cover the mounting surface with a sheet of quarter inch wood. I did this only because the enclosure is made out of plastic and when compared to a typical GPU enclosure made from metal, anything will help. The wood will provide some additional strength as a mounting surface, but also, if the power supply gets hot, the wood will handle the heat a lot better than the plastic will. When mounting the power supply, the only cable connection that needs external access is the power that leads to the electrical wall outlet. Originally, I planned to have the power supply resting on its short side, but now with all the extra internal space in the enclosure, I could lay it flat on its wider side. With the idea that I probably won't ever modify the power supply from what it is, 
but I might modify the graphics card, I decided to leave as much room for the graphics card as possible, which means the power supply will be mounted on its short side as close to the edge of the enclosure as possible. Notice, when gluing the power supply in place, I only put glue on the outside edges of where the power supply touches the enclosure. If I need to remove the power supply in the future, slicing the glue away from the power supply with the razor should work. If I had glued underneath the power supply, there would be no way to get to the glue and the only way to remove the power supply would be to tear it away from the wooden platform, which could damage the wood. When mounting the dock, things to consider are the data connection to the computer, the length of the card being installed in the dock, the video cables running from the video card to one or more monitors, and finally, the space needed for future overclocking and cooling modifications to the GPU. With the idea of allowing as much flexibility as possible for future expansion, I decided to mount the dock on its side, near the corner that I thought would allow the best cable and card management. With the dock mounted on its side, the card extends parallel to the base of the enclosure, but with a slight gap. To fill this gap, I'm laying a silicone heat protector below the video card, which hangs down slightly. This helps prop it up so it won't torque the slot of the dock but also protects the wood from excess heat that could be generated by the GPU. No gluing needed, the card should keep it in place. For cable management, I'd originally planned to cut a hole in the clear plastic where needed to feed cables through. Though I won't be removing the clear cover that often, when I do, it'll be a bit of work to get the cables out of the way before the cover can be removed completely. Instead, what I plan to do is cut holes in the blue part of the enclosure and feed the cables through those cutouts. Routing the cables under the clear cover rather than through it avoids the additional cable management that would have been required just to cover and uncover the enclosure. To cut the holes, I'm using a soldering iron. It makes it easier to cut and shape the hole to fit the dimensions of the cords that need to be fed through it. So this is the completed enclosure with everything installed. I'm going to skip the setup of the video card, since many cards will require a different setup that you can find instructions to elsewhere on YouTube or on the card manufacturer's site. One thing I decided to do was add this bracket to support the video card's backplane. It's a bent L bracket screwed into the wood platform. It's not a structurally sound bracket, but it will keep the card from popping out of the dock when the enclosure is bumped around. I'm going to end this video here. The enclosure does still need ventilation, but I'm debating how that should be done. I want to first see how hot the card gets under heavy use. Based on that, I'll implement something. For now, I don't mind removing the cover to provide ventilation. Running the cables through the base rather than the cover really helped in that respect. Something else I felt would be cool to add to this enclosure is RGB lighting. There's so much room inside that it wouldn't be hard to do something like that, and if I can find some kind of pass-through version that utilizes the power coming from the wall plug just before going into the power supply, it would be an easy modification. I hope this video can help you with your mobile gaming system. Leave your questions and comments in the comment section below. That's all I have for now, and I'll catch you in the next video.